Old Chong? My child's dad? Hey there, old man! What's up? I'm not deaf, you know. Look how hard you're working. That makes three titles for me in one breath. Uh-huh. Peel the garlic. I'm trying to write a sermon here, and I'm stuck. You're interrupting me. Hey, you're the one whose spiritual well seems to be dry, and you're blaming me for it? Come now, let me see it. Uh-huh. You've been at this all morning long, and you've written just one sentence. It's important we all soberly wait to welcome the Lord. How's that wrong? Don't you know we're well into the last days? Disasters are becoming worse and worse. And there's just no telling when the Lord will return. So we must soberly wait. We all wait and wait, and we look forward to it. We haven't welcomed the Lord, but we have found lightning that arrives to us from the east. Eastern lightning says the Lord's already returned. It always makes me wonder. Has the Lord already appeared somewhere else and we just don't know about it? Until I have figured that out, never will I feel assured. But why wouldn't you feel assured? When the Lord really comes back, he'll be riding upon a cloud in plain sight for all to see. So Eastern Lightning says that the Lord is back. Have you seen him? As I see it, something's wrong with your starting point. What's wrong with it? They've come to spread the gospel so many times. I think something's wrong with you for refusing to listen. I really admire both their strength and dedication. Huh? Let's take Brother Genji Joe uh, as an example. Please, not him. He's amazingly persistent. No matter if it's very hot or cold, if there's wind or rain, it won't stop. But what stop. is it that you admire about that? When I think back on my time working for the Lord, I recall sleeping hey, hey, under hey, the hey, stars hey, hey, hey. and the enough, moon. Enough, enough. Can we not go over your glorious past again? Don't you want to hear it? It's not that I don't want to. <laughs> it's that I'd rather break a hip. Day in, day out, I have to listen to these old stories. What's the point? It's not like my faith has grown any, has it? I've spent a lifetime with you and we still can't Knock communicate. Knock it off. Go get the door. Who's this now? You are home. Hello, brother. Oh, boy. Jen Ji Cho. There you go. Speak of the devil. Your mouth must have magic. Hello, brother Jen. Come on in. Thanks. What are you two doing? Practicing some Tai Chi? Oh, that's heavy rain. Here, come inside. Come on in. Oh, boy. I'll get you Looks a drink. Looks like this rain is falling just for you. Forecast inspired you? Brother Chang, you're very humorous. That said, God has given us an opportunity. Come on, let's talk for a bit. Hey, hold on. It's raining, and I realize that you have nowhere to go. If you're thirsty, you can have a drink. Here. And you're welcome to eat. But if you're here to talk of Eastern Lightning, invite yourself out. My husband can be very rude. Here, sit down. All right. We won't talk of Eastern Lightning. Brother Chung. You've believed for decades, therefore you must know the Bible. I've read it a few dozen times. <laughs> then why don't we discuss the Bible? You want to discuss the Bible? How long have you believed? For about five years. And how many times have you read it? I've only read the Bible once. <laughs> why don't you stop now and spare yourself embarrassment? Don't be so rude. I'm just letting him know. Brother Chung, I don't grasp much of the Bible, so I'd love to learn more from you. Listen, kiddo. Why doesn't he understand that I'm trying to give him a way out of this? Why won't he take what I'm offering? He doesn't look frightened to me. Actually, you seem frightened. What did you just say? Me? Yeah. I've believed for decades. I've read the Bible dozens of times. He has just believed five years and only read the Bible one time. Why would we discuss anything? He wants to discuss it, and you won't. Looks to me like you're the one who's scared. I'm scared? Yeah. Yeah, you think that? Then I will discuss it. Genji Cho. Yes? I have something to propose. If I understand you and I'm convinced, then we can fellowship. Excellent. Brother Chung, do you promise? I mean what I say. Go ahead. Now listen. Hmm. The Bible quite clearly prophesies and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
But you testify the Lord has secretly come as incarnate flesh so as to do work. Indeed. What is that based on? Can you find it and show me? Brother Chung, there's many prophecies in there of the Lord coming in secret. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Also Matthew 25, verse 6. At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. And Revelation 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Oh, honey, you read that so wonderfully. Calm down. Brother Chung, you know the Bible. So you know that all of these prophecies, the bridegroom comes, I come as a thief, and I stand at the door and knock, all refer to the Lord's return. Obviously. Was there ever any doubt? But then, if the Lord descends in a cloud for every person to see, who'd need to shout that the bridegroom comes? That... What's your that about? If all can behold him, why would any shout? Also, if the Lord does descend in a cloud, then how could he stand outside the door and knock? That's right. After all these years, how come I've never thought about that? If the Lord stands outside and knocks, how could he knock from among the clouds? If all could behold him, they wouldn't need to shout. Just what is going on here? Brother Jen, won't you please continue? Okay. When Lord Jesus said, the bridegroom comes, I come as a thief, and I stand at the door and knock, what he meant was his coming in secret. So then he comes in secret, and he also comes in a cloud? How does he accomplish that? When the Lord returns, he comes in secret, and then appears openly. This is to say, the Lord first returns in secret as incarnate flesh, to do the work of judging, purifying, and saving man. Once he makes a group of overcomers, his work in secret is over. Once that happens, God sends the great disaster, rewards good, and punishes evil, and that's when he appears publicly to all. And does my fellowship accord with the Bible? The Lord comes at first in secret, and then appears publicly. That fits perfectly with the Lord's prophecies. That's correct. My dear husband, I have always said there's mystery in the Lord's return. We've just been looking for the Lord to come in a cloud. We've ignored the prophecies of him coming in secret. How can we welcome the Lord like that? Hmm, that's got to be the way it is. Brother Jan, you're hey, just... Hey, hey, hey. What's the matter with you now? What's the big rush to agree? Are you not able to think about things before you talk? What is there to think about? His fellowship was quite clear. You made a promise, so we have to finish listening. But can't you think some about this? Brother Chen, here, please have some fruit. Is Brother Chung... Oh, <laughs> he just gets shy sometimes. Ignore him. Let him think alone for a minute. Let's you and I keep talking. Kay. You had just said when the Lord comes. I'm utterly surprised. He's relatively young, but he really grasps the Bible and has evidence for his fellowship. Darling, come over here. Brother Jan wants to tell us about the work of the returned Lord through incarnation. Tell him wrong. of it. Wrong, wrong. That's wrong. Just what is so wrong? If the Lord first returns in secret and then appears publicly, that fits the Bible. But what did you just say now? You said the Lord will return both in secret and as incarnate flesh. Correct. Well, the matter of incarnate flesh is where you go wrong. That's not in the Bible. In the Bible... Enough! I shall be convinced when the Lord descends upon a cloud. Brother Chung. Sounds like the rain has stopped. We'll let you be on your way. Hey, <laughs> what are you saying? Brother now? Chung, at last we have a chance to fellowship today. And I'm afraid I won't be seeing you again. What? We won't see you again? Hmm. Very soon, I will be leaving. And I don't want to leave with any regrets. My boy, you, you can't be. But you're so young, you can't mean... Oh, no, you heard how sick the boy is, and yet he makes time to share the gospel, and now you're trying to shove him out the door. For shame, my husband. My boy, sit down here. Sit. How was I supposed to know the boy was sick? Ugh, what are you two weather? talking about? Huh? Wait, didn't you say that you're leaving very soon? 
I'm leaving in a few days so that I can go spread the gospel in a different region. And so we won't have more chances to meet in the future. <laughs> well, you really need to be much more clear. You really? I thought you meant... Made such Ooh. a misunderstanding. Yes, he did, didn't he? Look at how awkward you made everything. It's my fault. You're really a piece of work, You're making son. making me more jumpy than a flying fish. Brother uh. Chung, what was that? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> uh, what he's saying is he's hesitating. Oh, will I listen? Will I listen? Let's just keep on listening, all right? <laughs> Do I have a choice in the matter? Oh, boy. All right. Well, then, you can keep going. Great. But one condition, and that's we stay on the Bible. Okay. Good. Welcoming the Lord's return is important. We can't be confused. We must listen carefully. That's right. Brother Jen, you just said the Lord would return in incarnate flesh. Are there such prophecies in the Bible? Dear sister, it has all the prophecies you could want on the Lord returning incarnate. In many prophecies, the Lord mentions he'll return as son of man. He'll come and descend as the son of man. And the Lord Jesus said, Be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the son of man comes. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. So what you're saying is the Son of Man refers to the incarnate flesh. Yes. If God did not come incarnate, he couldn't be called Son of Man. Just like Jehovah God as Spirit couldn't be called Son of Man. The Son of Man means someone born to man with normal humanity. Were he a spirit, we couldn't refer to him as Son of Man. That's why when prophecies cite the Son of Man coming, they're referring to the Lord's return as incarnate flesh. That's really true. Well, my darling, what do you think? Please, proceed. Okay, then let's look at Luke 17, verses 24 through 25. Let me see. For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Brother Chung, the Lord's prophecy says, first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. How do you understand those words? When the Lord returns, he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation? Oh, yeah. I understand. Hey, hurry up. Just so you're saying you that when the Lord returns incarnate as Son of Man, it will be like when the Lord Jesus came to do work. He'll encounter condemnation and resistance from both the government and the religious world. Yes! You know that really must be the case! What's with all the sudden movements? Today, Eastern Lightning testifies the Lord's returned. Haven't they been condemned and resisted by the CCP government and the religious world? And viewed like that? Well, then the incarnate Almighty God might actually be the return of the Lord Jesus. What you just said does fit with the Bible. I guess the Lord really will return as incarnate flesh. Brother Chung, now do you finally understand? What did you say at the beginning? What did I say? Who was it that said, if someone is able to convince him, he would do what now? What? Did I say that? All right, knock it off you. Brother Chen makes a lot of sense. Therefore, the two of us should listen to him. Yes, Brother Chung. No, wrong. It's wrong. And now what do you think is wrong? When he returns, it will be upon a cloud, something we all can see. If the Lord were to come incarnate and work in secret, none could recognize him. How then could we welcome him? Oh, wow. That really is a good question. The Lord told us long, long ago how to recognize and welcome him when he returns incarnate to do his work. The Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. His voice? Oh. You mean the voice of God? Uh-oh. What's wrong? If that is true, Hearing God's voice is what is key to welcoming the Lord's return. That's right.
God will return in secret in the last days as the incarnate Almighty God and knock with his voice to find those who truly yearn for him. So if we are God's sheep, we can hear the voice of God and welcome the Lord's return. But if we insist the Lord returns on a cloud and we refuse to hear his voice, if the Lord's outside the door knocking and we don't open it, Brother Chung, will we be capable of welcoming the return of the Lord? Hey, why are you staring at me? It's like you think he's talking about me. As long as you know where your own heart stands. Brother Jen, you just said that the Lord is standing outside our door knocking. How does he knock? Is it that one day the Lord will knock at my door and say, I'm the Lord Jesus, at which time I will recognize the Lord's voice and I'll welcome him right away? I'm afraid that's not how it works. Can you recall what's in Revelation 2, verse 7? Let's see, Revelation chapter 2. But we already two. know that one. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That means when the Lord Jesus returns in the last... Oh, no. What is it? I've read that line so many times. But why didn't I realize that, of course, God would speak to the churches in the last days as well? That's right. When he comes in the last days, he uses his voice and words to knock on our doors. The incarnate Almighty God has said more than a million new words, revealed all the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan, and has expressed all the truths needed to save mankind, which fulfills the Lord Jesus' prophecy. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. As long as we read Almighty God's word, we can hear God's voice and see God's appearance. Now stop right ah. there. Hmm? Continue. Today, Almighty God's word is already published online for people all over the world to seek and to investigate. Okay, now stop I, right I, there. I, I, hmm? Continue, continue. All who read Almighty God's words and recognize them as God's voice will be lifted before God's throne and be able to feast with the Lamb. These people are the wise virgins and the most blessed. All right, you need to stop right there. Darling, Just come go on. Ahead what is the matter now? Why are you interrupting I, the boy at the key moment? I, I, Brother I, Jen is giving such I, clear fellowship. Why are you I, refusing to hear it? I, what about you, I, Chang Shodao? I, Beginning now, you have the right to remain silent. Brother Jen, please go on. Brother Chung, I know you've believed in God your whole life. Every day you await the Lord's return. Today, the Lord's indeed returned and sent people time and again to your door to testify his gospel of the last days. But you refuse to seek or investigate and insist on leaving the Lord outside. Doesn't all that, what you've done, send a chill through the Lord's heart? You are walking the path of the Pharisees, you are rejecting and resisting the Lord. If you keep all this up, how will you be able to welcome the Lord's return? I fear that in the end, you'll be denied and rejected by the Lord. All right, I've said my piece. I should go. Brother Chung, I hope you think carefully about what I've said. Stop there. Where are you going? I know you don't want to hear me. You don't have to say it. I'll leave now. What? Just what are you thinking, boy? Come on, husband. What do you mean? What I'm saying is don't only talk to us. You should take out the words of Almighty God and read them out loud for us. When did I tell you to leave, dear boy? Now look, I understand you're excited, but you have to say everything. Otherwise, if you leave something out, especially at a key moment, come then... On. You never let me get everything out. The moment I speak, you say to continue. I speak again, you say to continue. I've been holding this all in. Brother Chung, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. It has nothing to do with you. It's because you're always... Huh? Well, brother and sister, this is the word of Christ of the last days, Almighty God. The word appears in the flesh. Thanks be to God. This is just so wonderful. Now let's read these words from Almighty God. Great. Yes. Come, come. Okay. Wonderful. Almighty God says, Since we are searching for the footprints of God, 
we must search for God's will, for the words of God, for the utterances of God. For where there are new words of God, there is the voice of God. And where there are the footsteps of God, there are the deeds of God. Where there is the expression of God, there is the appearance of God. And where there is the appearance of God, there exists the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Now may I read? Yes. Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path through which man shall gain life, and the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. These are God's words. These are absolutely God's words. I know I don't understand much, but when I hear the words of Almighty God, my heart can verify that beyond doubt this is the voice of God. Amen. Indeed. I can hear it as well. These are definitely God's words. The key to welcoming the Lord is seeking the Lord's voice and the Lord's words. We have now heard the Lord's voice, and we have gained the Lord's new words. And this is having welcomed the Lord. Amen. That's right. I understand, too. If we should hear people testify the Lord's spoken new words, what that conveys is the Lord is knocking at our door. Indeed. Oh, my darling. The Lord's return, and time and again sent brothers and sisters to knock on my door and spread the gospel. But I stubbornly stuck by my own foolish notions and imaginings. I insisted on awaiting the Lord's appearance from upon a cloud, and I refused to investigate the truth that has been expressed by Almighty God. Time and again I left you standing outside the door. The one I resisted wasn't a man. It was, in fact, the appearance and the work of God. My darling, I... <sighs> the two of us, we've heard God's voice now, haven't we? We both still have time to accept. We have time to obey. It's true. Brother Chung, Today we have read Almighty God's words. Today you could tell it was God's voice, which means you both have welcomed the appearance of God. That's right. This fulfills the prophecy in Revelation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If, if any, any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and, and will, will sup with, with him and, and he with me. me. Behold, the Lord truly has returned. Amen. Oh, husband, we are truly blessed. Thanks be to God. Chicho. Yes? Today I don't want you to leave, and I don't want to talk about anything. Let's read Almighty God's word. Yes. Hey, why are you standing there? Go and make our guests some dinner. All right. I'll go boil some dumplings. Yes. Now, let's keep on reading. Sure. <laughs> 